Champagne is the story of how a veritable English game rose to become the unlikely national sport of her old adversary, France. A story inviting you on a wild rugby journey, one hatched amongst the aristocracy of Paris, later infiltrating wealthy schools in Bordeaux and down the Garonne Valley into Toulouse, before seeping into working-class families across the rural southwest. A series of strides, each of which would layer the French game with a unique interpretation. The panache of Paris, where the creation of space allowed elegance and individual expression. Then a new sense of adventure and tradition through the schools of the Southwest, before escaping both its urban and upper-class origins to emerge as the game of the people. A game infused with a new, untamed passion. For rugby in the Southwest now emerges as a monoculture. It was everything. A region which became known simply as Luvali, land of the oval ball, as every little hamlet pulled together their team. Pride of the town, complete with home colours and songs and legendary new rivalries. It was territorial and brutal, as rugby was adopted with great glee as the legitimate channel through which to resolve conflict, even age-old vendettas between neighbouring towns. The product was a flurry of flaying fists and shattered teeth of blackened eyes and twisted digits. And yet, with the final whistle, rugby, as is its curious way, brought people together. Although unlike Britain, where its posh young men would now retreat to the pub singing profanities, in France, it was the whole community that gathered women and children, wine and food and song, framed like a Renoir masterpiece and then bound by stories of valour as told through any remaining shards of ivory. The home nations, though, were appalled. The frightening on-field brutality and increasing rumours of professionalism were seen as a threat to the very integrity of their game. And in 1931, it came to a head, as the bewildered French were formally expelled from the Five Nations. It was a hammer blow to French rugby, and the compliant Springboks opted to join the boycott, not playing their traditional fixture against France following a tour of Britain later that year. That said, a young debutant on that tour, sadly denied his only opportunity to play against the French, would many years later help to bring France back from rugby isolation. His name was Donny Craven, a young man whose famous connection with the Maori people as forged during their tour of New Zealand in 1937, saw Craven's beliefs on the game moulded in curious alignment with the French. Specifically, that rugby was a means of resolving conflict, not for creating it. Accordingly, when Craven was later appointed president of Springbok Rugby, he set about dismantling the barriers which had long vexed the game of rugby, notably through a famous invitation to the French to tour South Africa in 1958. For France, rugby's original pariahs, this was a first ever invitation to tour the Southern Hemisphere. It was a tour which would forever shift the balance of world rugby, as those various French influences over the game, the space, the panache and the passion finally clicked into place, culminating in a magnificent brand of rugby. An approach so beautiful and so effective, it was bestowed with its own formal designation, Champagne Rugby. It was perhaps the most extraordinary tour in all of rugby, introducing the world to a new rugby superpower and the mighty Springboks to its new nemesis. But in the process, an enduring loyalty was entrenched between the two now famous rugby nations, a connection with curious implications as South Africa now entered its own period of rugby isolation. Champagne is a story connecting dots and celebrating big characters. Jean Sebadio, Lucien Mias, Donny Craven, H.O. de Villiers, Roger Bougaro, Jean-Pierre Reeves, Frank Manel, a story carefully crafted to provide all the context you didn't know you needed ahead of the 2023 Rugby World Cup in France.